Steve. Today, from Cleveland Stadium, it's the Pittsburgh Steelers versus the Cleveland Browns. On the Cleveland Lakefront, two intense NFL football rivals meet today. For the 69th time, Pittsburgh and Cleveland, separated by a two-and-a-half-hour drive, these two working man cities enjoy their closeness only if it's hard-hitting. The black and gold of the Steelers, the orange and brown of Cleveland, once again mix it up with the promise of a football style that's black and blue. And a light rain falling on Cleveland Stadium and a sellout crowd of 80,000 fans. Approximately 10,000 of those will be rooting for the Steelers. Hello, everyone. Dick Enberg with Merlin Olsen and this vigorous rivalry renews. The free agent is at the other end. Steve Cox to kick it off. Spencer from the University of Southern California. One of many rookies on the Steeler offense this year that is off to a great start. Spins it towards Spencer at the five. 20. 27 yard line is where David Woodley and the Steelers will put it in play. Woodley, the former Miami Dolphins quarterback, and with him in that backfield. As we check the alignment for the Steelers, there they are. Rich Ehrenberg, the rookie from Colgate, and Elton Veals, another rookie. He is from Tulane. John Stallworth, Louis Lips, the top draft pick, and veteran Benny Cunningham at tight end. Tun Chilkin, happy birthday, Tun. She's 27 today. Wolfley, Webster, the All-Pro Center, Wingle, and Brown complete that offensive set. On first down, it's Veals. And Veals plows his way to the 36-yard line. A gain of nine before Don Rogers, the rookie from UCLA, can make the tackle. Defensively, the Browns have Reggie Camp, Bob Golick, and Keith Baldwin, their front three. Their linebackers, some say the best in the NFL, Banks and Johnson, Cousineau, and Matthews. Frank Minifield, a rookie, is starting at one corner. Hanford Dixon at the other. Al Gross and another rookie, Don Rogers, at safety. Second and one. Rich Ehrenberg, his first call, and he has a first down close to the 40-yard line. Ehrenberg was the leading rusher for the Brown for the uh, Steelers, 148 yards in the first three games. Clay Matthews made the tackle. Dick, neither of these teams have run the ball effectively in the early part of this season. One of the reasons the Steelers are happy is that uh, they are getting productivity out of Ehrenberg. He has a 4.0 average, but look at the number of young backs. Five young rookie backs on this team, two of them starting today. That's, that's remarkable. You have to search a long time, even an expansion team. Five out of the seven running backs are rookies, and two start today. First down, Woodley. Woodley, good foot speed. Traversing the field, cut in front of Lips, and has a first down in Brown's territory at the 31-yard line. Extremely professional play from Doug Woodley. Watch how long he waits in the pocket here. Look how calm he is. And then realizing it's all over, uses his feet, his mobility to get him outside. Lips, you saw on the edge of your picture, he's coming back, but the pass was to Stallworth all the way. Let's watch Woodley more carefully here. Look how long he stayed in that pocket until he finally came, and then he broke the pattern. Okay, he says, come on back. Now, he may well have been wa waving his lips to come back and help him. He was, and Stallworth right in the pattern. Beals, a big man at 230 pounds, an 11th round draft pick. He broke O.J. Simpson's junior college rushing records in California at Merritt J.C. and then migrated to New Orleans and Tulane. And he picks up five more at second and five. Frank Pollard is injured, so Chuck Knoll, and it's the first time that Knoll can remember that he started three rookies on offense, lips at wide receiver, and two first-year running backs. Woodley at the Browns, 26. Chip Banks, number 56. You 
sense this crowd and their early involvement. Very important for the Cleveland Browns to get off to a good start in this game. Their fans terribly disappointed in an 0-3 start. And with a full house, if they can play well early, this crowd will work for them. If they get off poorly, I'm afraid this crowd may well turn against them. And yeah, the crowd wants to cheer. This city very proud of its pro football heritage. And they don't like that 0-3. A lot of grumbling. Ouija Thompson, the 6'6 rookie from Florida State, is wide to the right as the Browns look at a one-back offense, four wide receivers. Wide open Aaron Berg. He's hit at the 20, and I believe he has the first down. Yes, by a yard. Rich Ehrenberg following Marv Hubbard and Mark Van Egan out of Colgate, where he broke all their records. He came in with nine receptions. That's his tenth. He has been an extremely prolific young back, and they say has great maturity for a young man. He found some open territory there, doing a good job of maintaining as he's knocked down by Hanford Dixon. So first down for the Steelers. They've taken the opening kickoff down the field and have a first down now well in field goal range. Back to the two backs, Aaron Berg and Veals. Woodley to Stallworth. Hanford Dixon saved a touchdown. That's so tough so tough to play man to man with a receiver like John Stallworth Stallworth who's come back from a miserable year last year only eight catches on the season but was injured a good part of the year has his health back now and he's making believers look at the little stutter step there now right at the last second Dixon adjusting to that ball knew it was in the air he got the key from Stallworth somehow either his eyes or his hands something and got his hands on that football Dixon, a number one pick out of Southern Mississippi three years ago, makes an outstanding play. Aaron Berg fumbles, and the Browns have recovered. Clay Matthews not only delivered the pop, but covered the ball. Number 57, Matthews. The Cleveland Browns have not had to apologize for the performance of their defense. Ranked sixth in the NFL, they have played exceptionally well in all three losses. One of the reasons, number 57, Matthews, look at that. Look how quickly he reached out and snapped up that football. So Matthews delivers the blow to stop the Steeler march, and Cleveland has it at the 19. In this first weekend of autumn yesterday, temperature in the 80s, but in the high 60s today, and the light rain has now dissipated, and it appears we'll not be troubled uh, for the moment. McDonald, Pruitt, his lone running back, Brian Brennan, the rookie from Boston College, Duriel Harris, the ex-Dolphin, two tight ends, Newsom and Holt, with Deacon Jackson, Babb, Delamalur, and Farron will watch Paul Farron. He's the man at right tackle, substituting for Cody Risen. McDonald going fairly deep, and it's going to be almost intercepted as that ball bounded into a quintet of Steelers. Rick Woods, number 22, the man defending down there on the pass. And here is that Steeler defense with Goodman, Dunn, and Gary. Basically, that's their defense against the run, and they'll bring in uh, their pass rushers, Merriweather Little for Jack Lambert. Robin Cole has moved inside this year, Brian Hinkle. Cornerbacks are Woodruff and rookie or second year man Sam Washington. He has four interceptions. Donnie Shell at one safety along with Rick Woods. Boyce Green is hit in the backfield. A three yard loss. A flag is down. Some jumping on the Steeler line. Someone may have poked their head over. The Browns need that offside. Instead of a three-yard loss, it'll be second down and five out at the 24. First score from New Orleans, the Saints leading St. Louis on a 25-yard Anderson field goal. Gary Dunn, the nose tackle, apparently jumping offside or lined up offside. Sam Ratigliano, 
52 years of age, his seventh year now with the Browns, coach and vice president. Screen to green. And he is close to a first down near the 30-yard line. Paul and Goodman collaborated on the stop. Green from Carson Newman College in Tennessee, and he has the first down. He broke in with a big day against Pittsburgh last year at Three Rivers Stadium, 137 yards. The Steelers very proud of the fact very few have rushed for 100 yards or more in Pittsburgh. And Green did that, although in defeat last season. First down. it up was Goodman down low Mike Merriweather from the University of Pacific number 57 also in on the play Atlanta takes the early lead at home against the Oilers Bartkowski to Cox a 23 yard touchdown pass in the first quarter when you look at that Steeler defensive huddle again you're looking at not only years of tradition but they have come right back this year in spite of the changes to play exceptional football Pruitt behind McDonald and Big Mike Pruitt gets his first call and is hit shy of the 35. It'll be third and five. Hinkle and Little made the stop along with Keith Gary. Some real concern for the running game of the Cleveland Browns, averaging only 2.8 yards per carry, and that's exactly what Pruitt himself has been averaging. And one of the reasons, again, the loss of Cody Risen the very finest offensive lineman on that Cleveland roster, not only against the pass, but also against the run. And then the man expected to, to be their number three tackle, Farron, has also been hurt, although he is healthy and playing today. Steelers looking for the pass and won't be disappointed. Harry Holt could not haul it down. It appeared to be good enough to catch. Holt, who has had a couple of bad games, the last two defeats to the Rams and Denver, and McDonald a bit unfortunate on that toss. He had hold on the run. McDonald concerned today about several things. Prime among them, not turning the ball over. He told me earlier, he said, I cannot turn that ball over. Steve Cox with a good average, over 41 a kick. Yeah. And the brilliant rookie at the other end is Lips. Sweet or hot, whatever you want to nickname him, they love him in Pittsburgh. And they want to kick away from him. They said, we don't want him to have that football. Let's see if the ball goes out of bounds. No, it's very going right short, to him. But it's short. No fair catch. He fumbles and recovers his own fumble at the 31-yard line. A 35-yard punt and no return. Two ways to handle a great return, man. Get it high and short so you can cover it or put it out of bounds. This one is high and short. Lips came up to handle it and batted that ball around. But watch how quickly he reacted to that ball once it was loose. Knew he'd made a mistake. Once he touches the ball, watch how quickly he goes after it here. And he beats the Browns to the ball. No score with 9-10 left in the first quarter. Talking upstairs to the offensive coordinator. Joe Scanella. Larry Weaver was their offensive coordinator, but he is no longer here, and Scanella has taken over those responsibilities. No score. 9-10 remaining first quarter. Second possession for the Steelers. The give to Deals. He has four yards. It'll be second down and six here in Cleveland. Right now, let's go to New York in this update. All right, Dick and Merlin, down in Atlanta, Steve Bartkowski has put the Falcons on the board. Arthur Cox, he's the 255-pound tight end in the crease. TD pass of 23 yards, and Bartkowski could have a big day against that Oilers secondary. It is 7-0 early in the first quarter. Well, the Oilers, like the Browns, looking for their first win. Second and six. Ehrenberg, hauled down by Eddie Johnson. Johnson, who runs with the speed of a back, playing at linebacker. He's from Louisville, and he shot through to drag down Aaron Berg for a loss. Dick, they talk about the strength of these linebackers, and in particular mention the other three linebackers, but the leading tackler on this team is Eddie Johnson. That's a little bit ironic. He lives in Strongsville, Ohio. That's a good residence for a linebacker, Strongsville. Third down. Golick's 
pressure, forcing Woodley wide of the mark, and the Browns defense gets a hand. Golick coming all the way around behind the pressure on the left side. You'll see him coming right through your picture momentarily as he gets outside, and Woodley, sensing his presence, tried to get it to Ouija Thompson, his big six-foot, six-inch wide receiver. Unable to get the ball there. In fact, it bounced around, almost intercepted. Craig Cole quits first punt with Duriel Harris back at the Cleveland 28. Low kick. Harris at the 22. 30. And a good return to nearly the 35-yard line. 45-yard punt. 13 yards on the return. Timeout. Seven minutes and 37 seconds remaining in the first quarter in Cleveland, Ohio. No score. This big oval on the lake. I would have enjoyed days like today. It seemed like we always got the wind coming off the lake and big snow banks on both sides of the field. And this was one of the coldest stadiums in the league to play in under those circumstances. Well, despite the rain, the field in excellent shape. No score. Brown started their 35. Down the middle to Holt. He's got it at the Pittsburgh 43. So Holt, who failed to catch the last pass that stopped the Cleveland drive, comes up with a 20-yard reception. A good tight end with speed can often find room to maneuver between linebackers and the secondary. McDonald getting that ball on target here as Holt is able to get away from Dwayne Woodruff, number 49, and away from the drop of number 50, David Little. Little more effective against the running game than the pass. First time the Browns are in Steeler territory and Mike Pruitt plowing for a couple. Other scores. Buffalo at home takes a 3-0 lead against the Jets on a 52-yard field goal by Joe Donello. And Minnesota, 7-0 at Pontiac. Kramer to White, 26-yard touchdown throw. Dick, the skinned end of the field, the infield, may come into play as the Browns begin to drive down that direction. And with this light rain, even though it was covered, maybe a little slippery down there. Second down, Boyce Green with enough speed to turn the corner. Knocked out of bounds at the 32 by Donnie Shell. It appears that he has a first down. Tight ends not only have to be great receivers, they also must be good blockers. Let's watch number 82, Ozzie Newsom, right here on Sam Washington. He's got him locked up one-on-one, -on -one, and even though he was trying to block him from the inside out by staying on him, he's able to keep him off Boyce Green. The Cleveland Indians still have some games remaining the final week of the baseball season next week, so as you see, the infield part of the stadium is ahead for Cleveland. First down, Green diving ahead with a flag down. Green to the 29-yard line. Checking on other action in the National Football League. The New Orleans Saints have built on their lead 10-0 against the Cardinals. Richard Todd, a touchdown throw to Wayne Wilson, 34 yards. Illegal motion, number 81, offense, still first down. First and 15 is Harry Holt, quick on the trigger. Browns utilizing a single back and uh, kind of rolling their backs in and out. Pruitt and Boyce Green, and they're happy to have Boyce Green back. He gives them some outside speed, and he's been injured. Has had problems with his ankles. In fact, he said Wednesday of this week, the first time he could really cut since uh, early in training camp. McDonald to Ozzie Newsom, and Newsom out of bounds. The five-yard play, Newsom who is the all-time Cleveland Browns receiver in number of catches, started the year with 351 and has a dozen more. He is very important in the scheme of things. The Browns really run a, a game plan or a, an offense similar to what you find in San Francisco and Cincinnati and, and also particularly in San Diego. Single back, receivers moving all over the field. Second and 10, it's green. Quick toss to Green as the offense was loaded to the left. He ran back to the weak side and picks up seven before Keith Gary and Donnie Shell can make the tackle. DeLam Lure with a key block. And that is exactly the kind of thing that Boyce Green can give this Browns offense. They've been minus that in the early going. 
Pruitt, a very powerful runner, but mostly an inside runner. Green can get outside. He can stretch that defense laterally to the sideline. Third and a long three. Newsom, Holt, and Bolden. Three tight ends are in for Cleveland. Duriel Harris wide to the near side. Green again to the short side. It's going to be close. Dick, we haven't seen any eruptions on the line of scrimmage, but down there in the pits, especially with the offensive line of the Browns and the defensive line of the Steelers, some angry barbs back and forth in the papers. And you better believe that if uh, an elbow finds its way to the wrong head, we're going to have some fights down on that field today. Yeah, the Steelers saying that the Browns were dirty, the offensive line, and the Browns countering uh, very mildly back. They're going to go for it. Atlanta leading 14-0 early in the first quarter, but here in Cleveland, the Browns with a critical fourth and one will gamble for the first down. Pruitt, Davis, and Biner all in the backfield behind McDonald. That's Biner in motion. Pruitt diving. Going to be close. He needed almost a yard. He used that big body of his like a battering ram coming right in behind the big bowling back Johnny Davis. But the Steelers showing their strength on defense, and I believe they're going to have to measure it. He needed to penetrate inside the 23. Brown's using Biner coming in almost as many teams would use an extra tight end. And there you saw Pruitt launching himself over the top. But look at all those white shirted Steelers. They're not giving an inch on defense. They'll be very, very close. Crowd will tell you. And it's a quiet roar because it's the Steeler fans who cheer. Rattigliano, obviously disappointed. He knows how important the early momentum is in this game. Pittsburgh tough in the short yardage situations. And Chuck Knoll with a mild standing ovation for his defense. And Sam Rattigliano's problems on offense continue. The Browns have been unable to score. The tough St. Louis Cardinals host the Miami Dolphins, one of four unbeaten teams in the NFL. That'll be next week. Here's a quick look at the action you'll see on NBC. Lead against the Steelers. We've been catching up of late. The Browns have always played well here. In fact, the Steelers have only won ten times. Well, you're getting a lot of information there, but Pittsburgh has won only ten times here in 35 chances. David Woodley. No score in the game brings the Steelers to the 23 yard line. Whoops, Benny Cunningham. No play, actually, the illegal motion negating the play. Woodley and McDonald, there is a large difference between the two of them not throwing the ball so much, but in another capacity in mobility and that's certainly one of the most valuable attributes of a quarterback who can turn a play and you saw Woodley do it just a, a series ago when he rolled out under pressure and made the made the throw Woodley able to run effectively is not anxious to leave that pocket but can do it McDonald on the other hand well he's been referred to as sometimes being terminally immobile <laughs> Had seven sacks last week terribly costly to them Sometimes it looked to me as if he could have avoided that with a simple step to the left and the right. Perhaps that's an awareness that he will gather, but he needs it to protect his offensive linemen from those sacks. They're taking the heat. And yeah, they've untangled the flag situation. Offsetting fouls, offside, defense, illegal motion, 89, offense, replay. So apparently the offside did not occur because of the motion by Cunningham. So... Offsetting and no play. It's still first down at the 23. Strange call. Don't see that very often. No, you do. don't. I've seen him, uh, of course, uh, call him both ways on the personal fouls, but not so often on that kind of situation. Dick Jorgensen is our referee today. No score. 4.49 left. First quarter. Whoa. Ehrenberg, night down. Reggie Camp 96 and Al Gross who came in to clear out the interference. No score in Cleveland. Let's check where there is some activity. All right, Dick and Merlin, one of Hugh Campbell's problems down in Houston has been falling behind early and being forced out of his game plan. That's happening again. Steve Bartkowski to Alfred Jackson, 48 yards, set up a Gerald Riggs TD run of two yards, and already it is 14 to nothing with six minutes left to play in the first quarter. Jack Lambert. A 
dislocated toe, has missed the last two games, and looks as if he won't play today. David Little in his spot. Up the middle goes Elton Veals for a couple. Eddie Johnson, number 51, down at the bottom of the pile. Actually, Veals outweighs most of those Cleveland linebackers. He's 230-plus. Buffalo now leading the Jets 10-0 early. That score coming on a Ferguson to Van Williams short touchdown pass. Redskins lead on a John Riggins run. Some thought he wouldn't play today. Yeah, the old diesel is in there, a 13-yard romp to take the early lead at New England. And uh, one other, Merlin, uh, no score, the Rams in Cincinnati early. So far, the Browns doing a good job of limiting the running game for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Pass formation now for Woodley. Flag down. And Woodley's arm is hit, trying to pass. Incomplete. Now the penalty flag. Webster heading for the sideline. I don't know what the... They're going to get a motion call. Illegal motion on the Steelers. Illegal of course, number 71 offense. Not up on the line of scrimmage. Not, not enough men on the line of scrimmage, and so the Steelers will have to kick, and indeed, the defense has been intense for the Browns. Going back to the last play, You'll get a feeling for the pressure. That's Elvis Franks, 94, coming in. They're able to reach out and actually touch the arm right there, Woodley. I think it was someone from the backside actually getting him. But uh, the ball actually hit the hit the uh, official in the head. <laughs> it came right down on top of it. It was Reggie Camp who made the defensive play. Poor kick by Colquitt. But it takes a good Pittsburgh bounce. It refused to go out of bounds and rolls all the way to the 16-yard line. Colquitt has not been kicking well. Ripped a 53-yarder last week, but Noel has not been happy with him. That might uh, bring a smile on the sideline. That's a 35-yard punt with a 20-yard roll. Three NBC, the Tigers are waiting to see whether it'll be Kansas City, Minnesota, or the California Angels. And it's the Cubs and Mets still battling for the right to get into the National League playoffs against the San Diego Padres and then on to the World Series beginning on the 9th of October here on NBC. From the 16, no score, Paul McDonald, the boy screen. And Green breaking tackles out to the 25-yard line. The Browns are running are, right, Merlin. They certainly are. They're going over there at... John Goodman, right now, it's uh, Keith Willis, 93 over there. The Steelers rotating those defensive ends. Bab in there, and they, they crank that nose tackle around, and he is led off by the center. Create a little room over there. Robin Cole blocked nicely. As you said it right, Dick, they're blowing some of those Steeler defenders off the line, making room for Boyce Green to run up in there. Oops, 64, oh. Delamalor raising up before the snap, and that will cost Cleveland five yards. 2.26 left in the first quarter. It's scoreless. Now to New York. All right, Dick, this is first quarter action in Buffalo. Joe Ferguson dropping back, and he'll find Booker Moore with this pass. And watch Moore, after he makes the reception, he will hustle his way down inside the five-yard line, loses his helmet, but not the ball. Moments later, Ferguson hit Van Williams from a yard out to boost the Buffalo lead to 10-zip. Dick? Well, here in Cleveland, they've got those hard hats buckled down firmly. Some hard hitting and no score. 2.26 left in the quarter. Second and six. Green again running right. And is out to the 24-yard line, a couple yards shy of the first down. Trying to pick up the five yards. They lost on the penalty against Joe DeLamalure as Boyce Green is showing us some quickness and some speed. They, they certainly have missed his presence as well as that of Dwight Walker, a receiver that was out because of a a late night car accident that really was a, a blow to these Browns. And we, of course, have mentioned several times the loss of Cody Risen, but Browns seem to be rounding back into shape. This is the healthiest they've been, but they've got a long ways to go to get a touchdown here. Surrounded by Steelers, McDonald unloading over the middle, incomplete. Duriel Harris was the closest receiver. And the Browns will have to punt it away. No one has doubted McDonald's courage. He has taken such furious shots over past weeks and sacked 14 times. But you've got to be able to move around in there, get that football out of there. 
Kind of hard if your receivers aren't open. I think that's what happened there. Just doggone good coverage on the part of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Cox to Lips, who stands at the 35 of Pittsburgh. Short. Lips has a chance to return. He's at the 45 and caught by an ankle down at the 47. So the Steelers, good field position. Dick, that's been one of the real problems hampering the Browns is that they have started their drives on the average coming into this game on their own 26 yard line their opponents on the other stand on the other hand have been starting their drives out on the 41 now that's a combination of special teams play and also a combination of an ineffective defense or an offense and turnovers but here it's just uh, just plain and simple the Steelers don't have to go as far for a touchdown as the Browns Al Cox had only a 35 yard punt First down at the 47. Chip Banks can't get Woodley. But Keith Baldwin can. Banks on the blitz. In on top of Woodley. Woodley doing a good job of breaking away in this situation. We talked about mobility. Here it is right here. Leg strength, running ability. But Woodley a little too cool here. Didn't feel Keith Baldwin, 99, bearing down. And Baldwin has his second sack of the year. 270-pounder showed great foot speed. He sure did. First sack for the Browns. Crowd chanting defense, second and 15. the rain continues again a flag is down Hanford Dixon made the play for the Browns they're going to call it back the Browns have had to make an adjustment in their offensive line Larry Brown apparently has re-injured a knee formation number 71 offense not up on the line of scrimmage and that's the Still same call down. that's his that is his replacement Emil Boris and Boris has not played that much he's been hurt himself he has got to line up within the numbers of the center. And what he's doing is just sliding back away from that ball. He wants extra room. He doesn't want that defensive end on top of him. Second time he's been called in the game. The Steelers have also had trouble at the left tackle where Tonch Ilkin has been beaten up pretty good. So they're playing with a makeshift line right now. It may cost them in this ball game. Second down and 20. the ball. It's an incomplete pass. Rain falling, and we might see more drops and more fumbles. So far, no scoring. Let's go to New York. All right, Dick, we take you to Atlanta now, where the NFL's leading rusher, Gerald Riggs, shows great second effort on this play, a four-yard touchdown run, his second score of the day. Woe to the Oilers. They're on their way to their 20th consecutive road loss. 21 zip they trail. Dick? All right, Robert, no score. Final seconds of the first quarter. 80,000 sold out here at Cleveland. And it's third and 20, and the defense will be coming after Woodley. Great pickup by the Steelers. Going long for Stallworth. Almost intercepted, and flags are down against Toom. It could be against Stallworth. Number 20 is Don Rogers, and 31 is Frank Minifield. They were all over Stalworth. Officials huddled up. You see the officials telling the players to stay out of that huddle. They won't discuss things if the players are sticking their heads into that huddle. Interference, number 82, offense. Cheered a little too quickly on that play. Even Pucker. 39 seconds left in the quarter. No one's happy. The Browns oh. and the Steelers, they're both booing. <laughs> Woodley. 
complete at the 49, but shy of the first down to Lewis Lips, his first reception today. He leads the NFL in yardage, 337 yards coming in. That was 11 more to that total. Eddie Johnson with a tackle, other scores. Jets have come back against Buffalo. It's 10-7 in the second quarter. And it's Atlanta 21-0 over Houston in the second. One of the difficult portions of the defensive plan that has not been as strong for the Browns as they'd like is pressure on a the quarterback. They're doing a pretty good job here. Final play of the quarter. Cole quit another short kick. Taken on the run by Duriel Harris. And he is back close to the 30-yard line at the end of the first quarter. Cole quit is limping as he heads off the field. He has had some Achilles problems. I don't know what he's worried about there. It looks like he's shaking it off a little bit, but that was not a good punt. 34 yards, the end of the period. First seven years in a Steeler uniform. He was picked up on waivers this August. He told me it was very, very difficult to come here and put on the brown and orange of the <laughs> Cleveland Browns. He said, I'd hated them so long, and here I was wearing the uniform. First down from the 30. McDonald has a man open. Newsom. 19 yards for Ozzie Newsom. Rick Woods made the tackle. Some players just match up extremely well against particular defenses. Ozzie Newsom has always been effective against this Pittsburgh Steeler defense. Just, uh, I don't know whether he gets up emotionally or whether he just works well against them. Right here, McDonald, a little play action fake to give him time, but you see him splitting right between the two defenders. Rick Woods coming over, Dwayne Woodruff, 49, dropping back, and he split the scene to pick up the reception. Green for three yards to the Pittsburgh 48 before Robin Cole, who has moved from outside linebacker to the inside, replacing Lauren Taves, made the tackle. Statistics in the first quarter relatively even as you look at total yardage within four yards. Time of possession favoring the Steelers, but not by that much. And so far, a very even ball game. And well, in a rivalry like this, throw the stats out the window. Throw the standings out the window. And let them play the game. Boy, screen. Picking his way to about the 42, close to the 41 in a first down. It's raining harder now than any time during the morning and early afternoon here in Cleveland. As that shot well reflects. Other scores. Unbeaten 49ers leading Philadelphia 7-3. Kavanaugh to Craig, a touchdown pass, so Montana did not start for San Francisco. New Orleans leading St. Louis 10-7. Lomax has hit Roy Green, 11-yard touchdown. It's wet on the lakefront. Uh, but it's held to just 23 yards. Cleveland has had difficulty running the football, but Boyce Green's speed reflected in that 45 yards. Just a minute into the second quarter. No score and a critical third and one at the Pittsburgh 42. Pruitt. Fighting, but I don't think he made it. What an attack defensively by the Steelers. Not one man. There was a classic example of how you have to surround the ball. Had only one or two hit Pruitt, he would have been able to forge ahead. But uh, Fourth man finally brought him down. Big backs. You've got to put a lot of people on them. You see the surge at the line of scrimmage. Robin Cole, who's a strong linebacker, the first one to hit him. Let's get inside and watch the action. You see the submarining going on. The line of scrimmage just inundated with bodies. And there was Cole at the top getting the first hit, finished off by the defensive backs and the other linebackers. Well, the Browns will gamble for the second time on fourth down. They missed on fourth and one at the Pittsburgh 23. This would give the Steelers great field advantage if they stop McDonald and the Browns. Incomplete, but a flag is down. We said desperation. Sam Rittigliano is playing this game as if there is no tomorrow, and the Browns will get a break. Apparently an offsides against the Steeler defense on a play that would have handed the ball to the white-shirted Steelers. Sam Rattigliano says, I need all the breaks I can get. Number 93, defense, lined up in the Keith neutral zone. Willis lined up offside. Willis, who set a Pittsburgh record last year with 14 sacks, 
A bit too eager on that play. Look at the bandages on that left hand. Well, as you get into the season, you find that most of those players down in the pits uh, have bandages and pains not only in their hands, but their legs and their backs and their heads as well. First down on the penalty at the 37. Ooh. Green, no gain. Edmund, Edmund Nelson, Nelson 64. No score, two minutes into the quarter. Let's go to New York. All right, Dick, in Buffalo, the Jets trailed the Bills 10 to nothing in the second quarter when they went with a bit of trickery. They snapped the ball off a punt formation to the up-back Tony Page. He runs 23 yards to keep the drive alive. Moments later, he scored from the two to cut the Buffalo lead to 10-7. Dick? All right, Bob, the old fake punt. Well, Sam Retigliano usually has a bag of tricks. We'll see if he dips into it against the Steelers today. Second and 10. The play was made by the veteran Donnie Shell. The tackle by Merriweather, but it was Shell 31 who shot up from a safety position to get a hold of Green and slow him down for the tackle. The play two helped dramatically by the play of number 57, Mike Merriweather. Watch Merriweather here. Very, very quick and strong linebacker getting off the block right there by Bolden, the tight end, and getting outside. Shell slowed him up. Merriweather finished the job. Steelers feel that Merriweather may be their best all-around athlete. Third and 12. Nobody there. Duriel Harris was closest. A flag is down around the pile surrounding McDonald. A very late flag going down. And it's going to be a holding call against the Cleveland Browns. And that's something that the the Steelers were screaming about it. I don't think that Cox is going to kick. They have no one back. Ball is at the 39. And Cox will try to just drop one softly in if indeed he's going to punt. Flag down again. And Cox, isn't that the way it goes when it's a short kick that you want? A punter who's not punting well gets his best kick of the day and drills it right through the end zone. And what a what a waste. The most he can pick up there from the line of scrimmage is going to be less than 20 yards. Well, I think the Steelers will take it at the 20. You almost wonder if... Illegal formation, number 20 offense, not up on the line of scrimmage. Oh, there have been a lot of that today. The officials off. much more aggressive in calling illegal alignments during this season. That's something they've stressed. So instead of pinning the Steelers deep in their own end, the punt through the end zone, and Pittsburgh will start. He's also in the pit crew, Indy 500-style racing. Scott Brayton, and uh, he got Cousineau to join him this year in the offseason. Says 260 there. He's 270, maybe even a pound or two heavier than that. He is one big strong dude. No score. Neils smothered after a gain of about two. Well, NFL week number five next Sunday, and NBC has this lineup of games waiting for you. NFL. 84, what a terrific job they're doing this year. And uh, those of you who may have been a little bit tardy in joining in early, don't miss Costas and X and Mack and uh, Hamad. And then the games that we have for you, Raiders and Denver, you'll be able to meet your old friend Lyle Alzado up in Lyle. Denver. Lyle wants to talk to me out there. Second and eight. What a collision. Don Rogers and Elton Veals, helmet to helmet. And Rogers, who had a reputation of being quite a hitter in his All-American years at UCLA, the rookie, rookie really stopped Veals cold. This is a physical game already. Webster, 52. Golick, 79. A couple of bulls going at it in the center. And Golick lost that battle. But let's go on the outside and see the contact between a couple of rookies. Elton Veals, 38. Puts his head down. Rogers, number 20, puts his head down. We could hear that one up here. Third and three. Woodley to Stallworth. Frank Minifield made the tackle, but at the 43-yard line, it's a first down for the Steelers. Minifield getting a little bit of help on Stallworth from Clay Matthews, who was shaking his head. He couldn't believe that Stallworth, back there in traffic, able to get that football. 
Woodley doing an excellent job of avoiding the pressure. They had real heat on him on that play, still able to get it off. See the Redskins in Atlanta still in command. Halftime will have all the scores and highlights for you. Here, no score. 10-24 left in the half. 16-yard gain to a first down at the 44. Beals. It looked to me, Merlin, as if Woodley was a bit surprised he was going to hand off the Beals and then on a second take, shoveled it back to his rookie running back. Marty Schottenheimer, who calls the defense for the Browns, hit this one perfectly. He had Minifield sweeping in from the outside. There you saw him right there. He was coming on the blitz, and they had the perfect call against that play. Minifield did not make the tackle, but when he caused the runner to go inside, he lost his feet, went to the ground. Going to be second, a little over nine yards to go. Cousineau, the man that finished it off on that last play. Oops, 62. Tunchilkin oh is hurt, and that's at a position where Larry Brown had already gone out. Now Brown, who is hurt, has to return to the lineup for Pittsburgh. We set a makeshift line. They're, they, they're working Snell, Ray Snell, number 72, at the other tackle position, a rookie. They've already got Blake Wingle in there, who's starting to learn his trade in the, at a guard position. Now Brown, with an injured knee, has to go back into the game. That's not good news for the Steelers. Jets come back from a 10-0 deficit to take the lead. Ryan to Walker, touchdown pass. Intercepted by Hanford Dixon as Woodley, a desperation throw for Stallworth. Let's watch an old pro working his craft against Hanford Dixon. Dixon is an exceptional athlete, number one pick. He's man to man. He's bump and run on Stallworth. Stallworth knows he can't catch the ball here. His job to keep Dixon from catching it. And Dixon got up complaining that he was pushed, but they should have had an offensive interference penalty. The rain now has lessened considerably, just a light sprinkle falling. Third and nine at the Pittsburgh 45. Intended for Louis Lips, but a bit too tall. Al Gross, Don Rogers, both in there in the center. The, the Browns have replaced three of four starters from last year, and they are doing a fine job here today. They're playing well against a, an outstanding set of receivers. Cleveland will get the ball, hungry for a score. As you know, they were shut out in the second half in their loss last Sunday night to Denver. No score, 9.31 left first half today. Oops, almost too tall. Another poor kick by Colquitt. Oh, almost hit Cousineau, who was right in the middle of it, but down by Pittsburgh at the 28-yard line. Neither punter having a good day, and a flag is down back at the Pittsburgh 45 well, against the Steelers, but it's only a 27-yard punt. We'll think. take the ball. They have the option, and you see Sam saying, hey, we want that football. Let's get it down while we've still got some time to work with it. Sam Rotigliano has been talking to himself this season. Always quick with the one-liners, but when you're 0-3, those don't digest quite so well with the fans of the Browns. Nine minutes and 21 seconds remaining here in Cleveland. That remark from Rotigliano. Well, he knows how to laugh at himself, but he has not been laughing much this week. He knows what a serious situation this team is in. First down, Cleveland at their 28. Green has been busy, and he loses a yard or two as Donnie Cleveland in the rain here at this giant stadium. McDonald in the grasp, and down he goes at the 19-yard line, and the flag is down upfield where we might have against the Steelers. Well, either that or we might have an offensive interference penalty. That's uh, flag drop that quickly has to be one or the other because the ball was not thrown. Right there, a perfect example of the lack of mobility. The illegal use of the hands against the Steelers. Well, that's out of the five-yard chuck zone. They're getting a shot on them out of the five-yard chuck zone. Let's go and look at the pressure that was applied. And, of course, that means... Green and Pruitt both in the backfield. First down after the penalty. Brennan, Ryan Brennan, the rookie from Boston College at the 50-yard line. A 19-yard pickup by...
why this exciting young receiver reminds us a lot of a Steve Largent. Soft hands, good quick moves, not blazing speed. You see him holding his hand. He hurt his hand earlier in the play. There is a flag on the field, apparently against the Steelers, so the play will stand. But watch Brennan here, working all the way across underneath, goes up over the top, took the ball right out of the hands of number 56, Robin Cole. He really has soft hands and playing with an injured hand. That's remarkable. Brennan, who's only 5'9", he says, but I'm tall based on my college quarterback, Doug, <laughs> Doug Flutie. He was shorter than me. It's taller, he said. Mike Pruitt. The first time that Pruitt off to a good roaring start, and he gains to the 45-yard line of about five. The, the various pieces of an offense work together. When the running game is going, the passing game is more effective. When the passing game is effective, you force people to respect it. They give you a little bit more room for the run. And right now, the, uh, the Cleveland Brown offense is showing more thrust than it's had in the first three games of the year. But still no score halfway through the second quarter. Ozzie Newsom had beaten Sam Washington, but the pass not there. Washington, of course, playing in place of the great Mel Blunt, who retired. We mentioned pressure on the quarterback. He's paying a price out there today. Some of it coming from number 57, Merriweather, here. You see the blocking by Bolden, the extra tight end. He's there after the ball is delivered, but in time not to draw a flag. And all of those quarterbacks do take a beating on a day like today. Lions and the Vikings in the Central Division, and Jan Stenerud's field goal has pulled the Vikings within one. Shell timing his hit perfectly to knock it away from Newsom, and the Browns will have to punt it again. The value of experience. Shell knowing when that ball was going to arrive, arrived precisely at the same time, and he's one of the leaders. Boy, he, you just see him. He's got him fired up down there. Getting a little uh, light on top when it comes to hair, but he still knows how to play this game. Free agent out of South Carolina State, five times a pro bowler, Donnie Shell. Cox, who kicked his longest when he wanted the shortest. Now he's got a little field to knock it to. And hits a good one. Out of bounds at the two-yard line. That is an outstanding punt what they were looking for absolutely perfect punt and watch it take the shot to the right side is he happy yeah that's like a wet shot to the green <laughs> defense is thinking turnover turnover and the crowd yelling behind Woodley and the short end of the stadium Ehrenberg gains three Three of the four linebackers for the Browns are first-round draft choices. Tom Cousineau elected to go to Canada before he finally came back to play here. Cousineau has, has what Marty Schottmeimer talks about as great traffic feet, able to move laterally through those bodies and legs and, and make that kind of play. That's excellent recognition and pursuit by Tom Cousineau. Second and seven. charged up Cousineau and Eddie Johnson and this crowd in Cleveland trying to do all it can to help. Brown's defense feeding off that enthusiasm right now and with their backs to the wall you watch the action on the line of scrimmage. Look at those Brown jerseys. Good good stand up right there. Elton Beals 38 hammering into Eddie Johnson. Cousineau coming over to finish it off. Al Gross 27 up from the secondary to help on the tackle. Tom Cousineau again, an 
important part of that defensive surge. Chip Banks, number 56, also there. Watch number 50, working through traffic all the way across. Gets the hit right there. Eddie Johnson, 51, 20, Don Rogers. They had five people on Ehrenberg before they got into the ground. Look at the traffic here as they just slam him down, stop him short. They've got to kick it away. Fourth and three, Colquitt to punt to Duriel Harris, who stands at the 50. Short kick again. Harris up to the 44. 34. Oh. Just as he had daylight to the far sideline, someone tripped him up. 35-yard punt, 10-yard return. The Browns are in great position. No score, but Cleveland will start from the Pittsburgh 34. The activity in the NFL. Stay with us at halftime. NFL 84 feature Al Davis, the American Football League remembered. Cleveland Browns. Pittsburgh Steelers now in the American Football Conference with two original NFL teams that crossed over along with Baltimore to form the AFC in the merger. Cleveland at the 34 first down at the Pittsburgh 34. Boys Green behind some good blocking. There wasn't much there, but his blockers kept pushing the Steelers back. And he gains almost five. For 75, Bill Kahn's has gone in in place of Doug Deacon. And that's an indication that perhaps the Browns want to run here. Deacon has had trouble with his legs and is not a great run blocker at this point in his career. Still an excellent pass blocker. But let's see if they continue to follow the running, the running example of that first play. As you know, some lines up on the left side. Harris wide right, Brennan wide left. And on the blitz, Robin Cole has the sack a big play by Cole who blitzed so often when he was the outside back there but has not lost the talent now that he's moved inside Cole played outside for so many years but perhaps this is a better position for him to utilize his strength and you see it right there how quickly he's on top of McDonald and McDonald sacked again that's the 17th time that Cleveland Browns quarterbacks have been sacked. McDonald taking all but two of those sacks. Around 10,000 Steeler fans who have made the drive about two and a half hours on the expressway. Pittsburgh to Cleveland. Third and 13. Intercepted by Washington. He's going to go all the way for a touchdown. Sam Washington. tragedy of that day, Dick, is that the ball bounced off the hands of the receiver, Brian Brennan, and was literally served up to Washington. Washington's fifth interception of the year. He's had two in each of the last two games. He carried one in for a touchdown last week. But let's take a look at how it happened here. The ball delivered under pressure, and Brennan up in the air trying to corral that ball actually knocked it down to Washington. Harvey Clayton, 33, forcing the play. Anderson booms through the extra point. Pittsburgh has scored to break the drought of this first half. Let's watch the rest of that play. And in fact, you can get a chance to see it again as Brennan goes up. And with that injured hand, unable to hook the ball down. Washington, open sideline all the way to the end zone and that may be a play that turns this game and tragically for these Cleveland fans turns it against them. Number five for Washington for seven points. Biner and also back there is Charles White. White the former All-American Heisman winner at SC. So is White at the 23-yard line. We'll probably have illegal use of the hands. That's right, against Cleveland. Anthony Corley, number 40, who's been such an outstanding special teamer, was down there, and I believe it was Jim Dumont, number 53, that hit him from the backside and blocked him illegally and knocked him down. And that puts this, the Browns all the way back inside their 10-yard line. Number 53. Pointed it out earlier. The problem here in 
Cleveland. The crowd came enthusiastically to support the Browns, but if things go sour, the feeling is that the Cleveland fans are going to turn quickly against their own. And with three losses coming in, the Browns' own confidence in themselves has to be rather shallow. They've done so well in the early going here. In fact, you had the feeling that they were getting the upper hand, and then wham. two quarterbacks coming into this game well actually today Woodley 64 yards McDonald 71 but the one interception truly not all of McDonald's fault as it was tipped to Sam Washington for the score McDonald has only one touchdown pass all year and yet three of his passes have gone for touchdowns to the opposition we'll show you their stats on the on the year which are even more revealing for those two quarterbacks Now that ball not only wet, but picking up the dirt from the infield. I've got to say that that field is in remarkable shape. 245 left in the half. McDonald flagged down. He may have taken too much time, Dick. That was not McDonald's fault. The Browns had a couple of late substitutions, and with a long run from midfield to the goal line where the team was huddled they just didn't get there with a message in time right now they better get their act back together there it is the penalty takes them back inside their own five yard line and with an aggressive defense you've got to be protecting that football right now the last thing you want to do is cop up that ball again 239 left before the end of the half thinking pass thinking big play didn't see Pruitt sneak in behind that's a tricky draw it's a it's a reverse handoff you don't see that two minute warning and there it is you saw him say hey hold it up let's use as much time as we can which they have done and there is the timeout two minutes left in the half Steelers lead seven nothing you see where John Henry won again let's hope he makes it to the Breeders Cup in November a nine-year-old but whether he is or not, it'll be the biggest day in racing history. Pressure on Steve Cox. He'll be kicking from about his own five-yard line. Louis Lips back at the Pittsburgh 45. Beautiful kick. Lips at the 38. And Don Rogers collects him at the 45, and a flag is down. 49-yard kick by Cox, 8-yard return. I think they wanted Cox to put that one out of bounds. He put it in the hands of Louis Lips. I think they're going to benefit here from a penalty call, illegal, illegal block against the uh, legal block against the Steelers. Indeed, that's what it is. They'll come back and march off 10 yards, take them all the way back to the 35. The issue is a football player over there. They, they start talking soccer instantly. and deals out to the 38 yard line I would imagine for you they must have wondered what position did you play that's as right as traveling <laughs> in Europe in Ireland and England and of course uh, you begin to talk football and being introduced they say well this is a professional football player well they think soccer instantly and they <laughs> they say hmm <laughs> goalie <laughs> goalie, goalie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> clock stopped with 136 left in the half Pittsburgh side of the ledger Saw Chuck Knoll across the way. Hard to believe that he's been in professional football 32 years since drafted out of Dayton University by Paul Brown here in Cleveland. Ball at the 38, second down and seven for the Steelers. Lips to the right, Stallworth left. First down by about a half yard in the grasp of Cousineau. 124, the clock continues to run. Dick, looking at this game on form and what we would anticipate going in with 
The Steelers being the second best defensive team in the NFL. The Browns being the sixth best defensive team in the NFL. It had to be expected that neither quarterback was going to be able to play that effectively. Effectively, Woodley certainly has had better numbers than McDonald on the season, but he hasn't done much today either. Third and one. That's Kolajeski, the rookie in motion, and deal. Oh my, was he hit by Chip Banks? 56 stopped the 230 pound rookie veals cold short of the first down in short yardage they put banks back about three and a half yards his job to anticipate the jump by the runner and to meet him in midair and oh did he do it there buried elton veals surprised the browns have not called timeout the clock continues to run so with a score seven nothing apparently Cleveland will be satisfied with just that and of course the Steelers will just let the clock run down it's about five seconds ahead of the 32nd clock so by the time Colt quick gets it and the play is run it'll be the end of the half very close to the block was Hanford Dixon this is Duriel Harris and that's the end of the first half so the Browns have failed to score in four consecutive quarters losing to Denver last week at home and they're shut out the first 30 minutes today but indeed the Steeler offense did not score a point only the interception is on the board at the intermission the Pittsburgh Steelers seven the Cleveland Browns nothing stay tuned for all the scores on NFL 84. Charles White 25. 7 0. The Steelers lead it. White at the 2. 10. 15. And caught at the 20 yard line. Anthony Corley, the rookie, number 40 from Nevada, Reno, made the tackle. Statistics for the first half, very even. And as you might expect in a game dominated by the defenses, not really impressive for either offensive team. Two turnovers, one by each team, one to stop a drive early by the Steelers. As you see the numbers there, finally. And the numbers for the Steelers, as we said, uh, well, they've got a little of a... A disadvantage in terms of total yardage, but their turnover went 69 yards for a touchdown. Evenly played first half, just one mistake. McDonald comes out throwing and going deep for a hold. He's open, and he's all the way to the 44-yard line. Donnie Shell made the tackle, so Sam Ritigliano came out throwing. 35-yard play. McDonald to Harry Holt. Talking to Duriel Harris about McDonald, he said if we can give him time, he can throw the football. He certainly throws it well here, right over the fingertips. That's twice the day that Rick Woods has had his hands almost on the ball. That went into the hands of Harry Holt. Make it 36 yards to the 43. Mike Pruitt. And he blasts to the 38-yard line, a gain of five before David Little, the younger brother of the former All-Pro guard, Larry Little of the Miami Dolphins, made the tackle. The Browns, lowest scoring team in the NFL coming into this contest, and of course were shut out in the first half, but look at the second half. Only seven points in the first three games, so they have to turn that number around, or it's 0-4 for them. Certainly off to a good start with the first couple of plays of this second half. down at the 32. Robin Cole and company making the tackle, but Mike Pruitt, he's one of the best kept secrets in the NFL with a thousand yards rushing for the past five years, the former star at Purdue. Number 56, Robin Cole slow getting up. Big collision as Pruitt slams inside. Cole, I think one of the people that he was banged up against, yes indeed. In fact, it was a one-on-one -on -one smash with Cole that has put Cole on the ground and he's still sitting there. Pruitt's back in the huddle. Mike Pruitt, as well as he has played, and he's positive and negative here in Cleveland. Now Lambert says he can't really push off, and you see the protection on that foot. The dislocation of that toe, it, it ended up laying across the other toes, if you can imagine that. He still has a great deal of pain. He does not have much mobility. They hoped he would not have to play today. McDonald going long. Newsom, what a catch by Ozzie Newsom. More than.
than anything else. These Browns need to get a few big plays. They need to get some touchdowns under their belt. Newsom doing a great job of forcing Woodruff to cover him and not the ball. You saw him slow down and then at the last second accelerate on that football. A remarkable reception by Newsom. It's first and goal for the Browns. Pruitt diving in but stopped at the goal line. Well, the NFL films, and they do such an outstanding job of capturing the emotions and the ballet, the beauty of the sport of pro football, have said when it comes to slow motion that Ozzie Newsom is the top uh, ballet dancer in the league. He, he makes more graceful, incredible plays in midair than perhaps anyone in the league, and there was one of them. That's in the highlight film. He's on the sideline right now because they're anticipating a running play inside, and they put the big tight ends in there, along with number 44, Biner. Threw it again, and he did not get in. That's two in a row from inside the two, and the Browns unable to get the ball to the goal line. It's third and goal. We mentioned that stat that is rather surprising that he has not scored, and you see him shaking his head as the Pittsburgh defense stiffens down on the goal line. They've had two shots from just outside the one-yard line, and they've got about another half a yard to go. Third down would be interesting choice for Sam or Tigliano if they don't make it on this play. Would he go for it on fourth down? They've been stopped twice today so far on fourth down. Ball about a foot away from the goal line. play call and threw it a stop in the backfield by Donnie Shell and Mike Merriweather. Boy, every time a player comes out of the huddle and has to ask the quarterback for some extra help, the play invariably goes awry and so it was there, a mix-up and the Browns field goal unit comes on. The Browns have made it Good yardage over the right side of that Pittsburgh defense, but on that play, John Goodman, 95, powered over the top of the tackle and stacked the play up deep in the backfield. Looked like he had that call all the way, and Sam says field goal. Take the short points, and they've got three. Matt Barr, not exactly an approving call by Retigliano, so the Browns come out. the D Steeler defense for a touchdown and are forced to settle for three. Todd Spencer, Anthony Corley are deep as Steve Cox will kick it off. Beautiful kick. And Spencer will not run it out. First down for the Steelers at their own 20. Today's game is brought to you by The Loud Crowd A tense defensive battle 7-3, to three, the Steelers lead it Woodley to lips He fumbles and the Browns have recovered at the 47-yard line Kuzino gets the ball of young Louis Lips. He's had a propensity to fumble the football four times last week, and Don Rogers, the young rookie out of UCLA, gets him to cough it up here as he streaks up and smacks that ball right out of Louis' hands. So the Browns trailing 7-3, have it on the turnover at the Steeler 47. But behind McDonald. Flag down as McDonald. Finds Ozzie Newsom at the 40-yard line. Check oh, the ball. Boy, McDonald really took a shot, and the flag is on Boyce Green, number 30, who literally tackled Robin Cole. Cole would have been all over McDonald before he got that ball out. Boyce Green just nailed onto his legs and tried to hold him down, and that's a costly foul. Second holding call on Green today. Holding, number 30, offense, still first down. 
You'll see it right here. Number 56, Robin Cole, is the man that's coming in. You see him flying through the screen. And look at the arm right around his waist, right there. And then the dive, he's got him by the leg now. <laughs> I mean, that's, Boyce is on, the, he's playing defense there, doing a tackling job. Paul McDonald says, I need some help, fellas, but no, that's not, not that the kind. kind. No. And you don't, you know, in a way, it's hard to blame a Boyce Green. His job to protect that quarterback. And uh, I think uh, Cole would scare me if I were in there. Ball goes back to the Cleveland 43. First down and 20. And a short yardage play to Ozzie Newsom. Sam Washington, the man who intercepted McDonald and returned to 69 yards for a touchdown. Jets trailing 13 to nothing early. Have scored three straight times, 21-13 in the third quarter. Washington leading New England, 20-0. 7-3, the Steelers trying to move even further ahead in the FC Central. Second and long. 67 ready for the charge out of the backfield to Pruitt hit at the 43 yard line tackled by Dwayne Woodruff the left corner eight yard play the one good sign that you see down there is that the pressure has usually come off the blitz stick which means that the the Cleveland offensive line is picking up the three and four man rush pretty effectively and whenever you have to blitz you force the one-on-one -on -one coverage on your defensive backs. That should give McDonald some opportunities to hit those people and perhaps to hit them deep. Third and seven. Wide open is Green. 30, 20. Touchdown, Cleveland. was on they threw everybody in the Browns picked it up and someone blew the coverage on Boyce Green who was all alone down the sideline 44 yards for a touchdown Matt Barr trying to tack on the extra point a disgruntled Chuck Noel not happy with that play so Cleveland so ravenously hungry for a score delights this huge Cleveland audience. I don't know what the delay is here. I guess uh, some of the fans throwing things down from the some of crowd. Thrown a streamer out into the field. It was out over the top of the goalposts. Bar completes the seven-point play. A quick look again. The blitz. Here they come. They've got just about everybody coming. They're stacking them up inside, and there's Green. No one, even around, he's all by himself. He sees the goal line, and he's got himself a touchdown. The Browns, after the fumble recovery, have scored and lead for the first time 10-7. Quarter, 10-7 Browns, as Cox will kick it off. waits in the end zone. He's taking it up. In trouble. He fumbles. Who's got it? It appeared that he lost the ball for a moment. Ernest Viner made the tackle. The Browns think they have the fumble and now the countering point from the white jerseyed Steelers. Pittsburgh does maintain possession at the 15. The Browns special teams that really fell apart and deserted them in the first game against Seattle certainly have come on strong here in the second half. Holding number 84, 
receiving team on the return. The rookie, First off. Kolacheski from Wyoming, and that puts the ball just outside the Pittsburgh seven-yard line. Turnovers. They'll kill you on offense. You can feed off them defensively. And, of course, the Browns able to capitalize on that last one and get the seven after being so disappointed on the prior one. Let's see if their defense is still hot. David Woodley facing that desperation Cleveland Brown defense. Intended for Lewis Lips, and he was well covered. Cousineau. Boy, is he a slim-looking linebacker at 6'3 and 225. Look at the waist on him. Number not one pick extra, by Buffalo. Not much extra body on him. M much in the same style of, of body form as, as Jack Lambert. Lambert, neither he nor Lambert really seem to carry the bulk, but they play an emotional game, and they survive with body position and good strength. Second and 10 from the seventh. Out of bounds. Lewis Lips had already gone out of bounds, so even had that ball arrived to the rookie receiver, it would have been no play. The official tossing his cap to indicate that Lips had gone out of bounds and thus was an ineligible receiver. You might say that was a bad pass. No way. Woodley threw that ball away, showing his maturity. He's not going to take a chance on that one. Perhaps he, too, had seen the, the hat on the sideline, but he threw it out of bounds. A Kemp to Brown pass. That's Ron Brown. The Olympic sprinter has given the Rams a 14-7 lead at Cincinnati, third quarter. They'd like to have Ron Brown here in Cleveland. Out of the backfield, incomplete to Ehrenberg, broken up by Rodgers. There's the young man you saw in the Rose Bowl on NBC. He had two interceptions. Rodgers, he's all over the field. He's not afraid to put his helmet in there. An intimidating kind of defensive back. He's one of the three new faces in that secondary. And watch right here as he levels Rich Ehrenberg. I'll tell you, receivers, even if they don't want to be sensitive to that, have to hear him coming. Duriel Harris is at the Pittsburgh 47. As Colquitt has not kicked well. And it's another poor kick away from Harris. Takes a good stealer roll and out of bounds at the Cleveland 49-yard line. Colquitt obviously is not 100%. He's not 100%, and that's good field position for the Browns again. They're getting their opportunities here in the second half. 73 Deacon at left tackle. First down for the Browns at their own 49. Boyce Green had not looked for the ball. Robin Cole was on top of him. Rain continues to fall. 10-7 Cleveland. Let's go to New York. All right, Dick, let's talk baseball. The Cubs scored six times in the top of the fourth in St. Louis. Big hit. Bases loaded double by Gary Matthews. All three runners come home. Now they're in the eighth. It's 8-1 eight Cubs behind Steve Trout. If they win two today in St. Louis and the Mets lose, the Cubs clinch the National League East. But the Mets behind Dwight Gooden lead Montreal 2-1 in the fifth at Shea Stadium. Dick. All right, Bob, here's Mike Pruitt fighting to the 47 of the Steelers, where it'll be third down and six. Here in this third quarter, the Browns took the kickoff to start the half, marched down to the one-yard line, had to settle for a short field goal by Barr to make it 7-3, and then the Steelers' lips fumbled when hit by Rodgers. Cousineau covered at the 47 of Pittsburgh. A couple plays later, McDonald hit a wide-open boy screen, a 44-yard touchdown along the right sidelines. Cleveland has captured the momentum of this second half and leads 10-7, third and six. Green. And he may have the first down. He's very close at the 41. Well, we talked about an old set of legs down there that belonged to one Doug Deacon, the dean of the offensive line, number 73. He's pulling to lead this play. This is, a, this is not his strength. But he pulls out the stops when it comes to a Steeler game as well. Number 93, Keith Willis over there. Deacon got a piece of him. 
Not enough to keep him out of the play, and it's going to be very close. Looks like just a little bit short, and Sam has another choice to make. He sends in the big bulls. Oh, that's a surprise. You got the lead 10-7, a wet field, and rather than try to pin the Steelers deep, apparently Sam is going to go for the first down on fourth down. Maybe he figures the law of averages is on his side. He's missed it twice early in this ball game, and we said it early, Dick. This is a desperation game for these Cleveland Browns. They have, there's no sense playing it safe here. Go for it. Except they've missed twice on fourth and one, and they couldn't score from the two on the goal line. as Pruitt is to the 39-yard line. And hard running by the veteran Pruitt. Dwayne Woodruff, number 49, actually had a hold of Pruitt in the backfield. If Pruitt was a less sturdy ball carrier, he might not have made it. Watch him now. You'll get a look at him. Donnie Shell diving inside. I guess it was. It was one of the linebackers. 56, Robin Cole, that actually had a hold of him. Woodruff was just outside of Cole. Ernest Biner, 44, the rookie from East Carolina, threw a key block at the point of attack. First down, Cleveland, 625 left third quarter. Browns lead by a field goal. McDonald. And he's caught from behind by Gary Dunn, number 67, the nose guard from Miami of Florida. But he picks up a few yards, about four. And that's a positive note. Not trapped in the backfield, even though he is not a fast runner. You don't have to be a fast runner to save yourself those tragic yards of the sack. He got out of there, got it back beyond the line of scrimmage. Instead of being second, 13, 14, 15, they're looking at a second and seven. Sam Washington made the tackle. Other scores, Jets leading by five. Danello, a 26-yard field goal. Danello has three field goals in the game. One, a 52-yarder. New Orleans leading St. Louis by six. Richard Todd has thrown his second touchdown pass to Hobie Mitchell. Looks like the markoff will be back against the Browns on that play. Holding number 84, offense, still second down. Ricky Bolden. The, no, Duriel no, Harris. Excuse me, 84. 88, Bolden. Yeah. Duriel Harris, that's an unusual call to find, find a wide receiver holding on that play. Must have been after the run began downfield. He was blocking. Second and 16. sound it's a shame we can't because you could hear it all the way upstairs that's over a hundred yards from where we are you could hear that as if we were right next door Donnie shell right there and I mentioned experience that timing so perfect that the ball and shell arrive simultaneously shell and Jack Lambert are the only members left from that famed steel curtain defense of the Super Bowl Steelers He's been injured, is in the game. He's wide to the right. Third and long. Incomplete to feature. And McDonald knocked down again as he delivered the ball. We don't always count the number of times a quarterback is hit, but every hit on that quarterback means something. It takes a little bit out of him and also causes him to have to become even more conscious of that rush. Last week after the Denver game, he said, I left the stadium. My wife said, what's the matter with you? He says, weren't you counting? <laughs> Sacks and just hits. He was battered and bruised. Lips back at the 10-yard line. Cox kick. A Steeler bounce into the end zone and on the 
of touchback Pittsburgh will begin at their 20-yard line. Five minutes and 12 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Cleveland Browns 10, Pittsburgh Steelers 7. Oh, game of the week coming up next Saturday. NBC's baseball game of the week. Sustained an offensive drive since very early in the game when that particular drive ended at the 20-yard line Cleveland Territory on a fumble by Ehrenberg. They begin at their own 20. Neils. And that swarming Browns defense stops him for no gain. Reggie Camp from University of California, 96, led the charge. A time to test your football mind. 1953, the year, a 21st round draft pick of the Cleveland Browns. He played for seven years here in Cleveland. Five conference titles, two NFL championships. He's on the field today. Can you name him? We'll give you the answer in a couple of plays. Second and ten. Draw and a fumble. And the Steelers fall on their own mistake as the handoff to Ehrenberg was dropped. And that'll be a loss of a couple. Handoff to Ehrenberg was erratic. And, uh, Go back and take a peek at it. Number 24, bright young rookie, looking inside. Has got to accept that football. He was quickly on top of it. Banks quickly on top of him. And look how many brown shirts in there. Very aggressive defense. Redskins, 23-7 at New England at Foxborough. Mosley has just kicked another field goal. Third and 11. are down and that's going to be interference against the Browns as they went to the big tall rookie Ouija Thompson Willis Jr. thank you from Florida State Lawrence Johnson number 48 been victimized in fact lost his starting position as a result of a couple of bombs last week that's a big play for Pittsburgh it would have been fourth down from their own 19 takes a lot of the heat off of them and Dick it's one thing we have to remember about this Steeler offense, Woodley calls better than half of his own plays. One of the few quarterbacks in the league to do it. There you saw the contact. Lawrence, Lawrence Johnson, or not Lawrence. Is that right? Johnson is right. Yeah. Lawrence Johnson. It didn't sound right all of a sudden. Good fake by Woodley. A wobbly pass to Stallworth. And knocked away by Hanford Dixon. The point I was making is that Woodley calls a very high percentage of his plays, able to get that one deep, and he has gotten the ball deep more often than I think than just about any quarterback in the NFL this year. In fact, when you look at the, at the receivers coming into this game, 34 passes were to the wide receivers, a very high percentage of them deep, and only 22 to the rest of the uh, offensive roster. So Woodley likes to get it wide. Most teams now throwing a much higher percentage to the tight ends and to the running backs. And for the Steelers, his targets are outstanding. The veteran Stallworth, the rookie Lips, and the man for whom that last pass was intended, 6'6", Weegee Thompson, who has become the number three receiver for Pittsburgh. Great protection. Oh, Woodley all day. And there's Thompson. He's got it in a first down at the Cleveland 29. What protection for Woodley. Excellent protection on that 26-yard reception. And you saw Thompson, Ouija Thompson earlier. His job when the quarterback's in trouble, get open. Find a place to catch the ball. Minifield, Frank Minifield, 31 is running around back there but when you give a quarterback time to throw and he really he earned that time with the rollout it's awfully tough to play man to man back there veteran Harold Carmichael now with the Cowboys second to, is Thompson to Carmichael the great veteran in height the Steelers close to field goal range first down at the 29 Deals. Chip Banks got him first, and Cousineau finished him off. Banks, angry at himself, got excellent position on the outside and then missed the tackle, but good pursuit inside out, and that is always the mark of great defense as Cousineau there to 
push him out of bounds and just a short gain on the play. But the Steelers moving the ball for the first time here in the second half. They're approaching scoring territory and they're going to become to be a little concerned. Neither kicker, neither the field goal kickers has played well this year. Gary Anderson, one of the best football past few years, has not kicked well, nor has his counterpart, Barr, for the Browns. taking a smaller defender inside. Here's Menafield, a real mismatch in height, almost a foot difference. Menafield likes to play the bump and run, and Thompson giving him a little fake to the outside, showing us excellent speed, and Menafield stretching with every ounce of fiber. He's giving up about five inches in that matchup, maybe even more than oh, that. More than that, but more like nine inches. He's only 5'9", and Thompson 6'6". Six, six. As far as he stretched on that play, he might be taller now. Well, he's great vertical leap. Third and nine. Behind Stallworth. He was open, but the pass was behind the veteran receiver. And now Gary Anderson will come in to try a long field goal that would tie. Woodley knows that he threw that one poorly. Ball thrown behind an open receiver. Stallworth at Working one-on-one -on, -one on Minifield had broken inside and got open. But Woodley missed him with the pass. Look at that. Only four misses all last year for Anderson. He's missed five times this year. This is a 46-yarder. It is perfect. And we have a tie game as Anderson hits it cleanly from six yards. And if you're a Steeler or... That featured a brilliant uh, reception by Ozzie Newsom as you see the Jets ahead by two. But they had to settle for a field goal, did the Browns, when they couldn't punch it in from inside the two and three try. 7-3. Then a McDonald to boy screen 44-yard touchdown. Made it 10-7. Anderson's field goal of 46 yards has tied it up. And Viner will not run it out. First down at the 20-yard line. Five in the white uniform, making a horse-collar tackle. And there he is, hey, a good looker, too. <laughs> Chuck Knoll, the now the head coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Boyce Green cut down by Robin Cole at the 20-yard line. That's the kind of play that very often will result in a fumble. Dwayne Woodruff, number 49, had gone back outside of the field and chopped back inside. Yeah, well, there's Chuck on the sideline. I, he's still uh, not a bad-looking fellow, even after all these years. You can't tell he's changed a bit. 52 years old now. Now is uh, Chuck Knoll in his 32nd year of pro football, 16th year now as head coach of the Steelers. That's hard to believe, 16 years old. 21 years as a coach. It's a long time. McDonald going long for Holt. And Holt <laughs> makes the catch. A flag is thrown. The deep judge downfield threw the flag so hard that he lost his footing and went down. And Holt injuring a shoulder, it appears. Or no, I guess it's the midsection as he made that catch. Let's see if it counts. Go back and take a peek at it ourselves as you watch him gather that football in, stretching all the way out. The flag already thrown. And Holt cradling that ball to his stomach. He came down hard on the ball, knocked his wind out. McDonald, under pressure, a good job of getting that ball off. And I'll go back to what Duriel Harris said earlier. He said, you give him a little time, he can throw that football. Watch him here. Feels the pressure. A little step back and then takes the shot to the head. That's Hinkle, number 53, that cracked him. Throw it back to the live action, gets two to make it second and eight at the Pittsburgh 46 yard line. 10 all tie with two minutes left in the third quarter. One thing, and we mentioned it early, earlier in this half, Dick, that the Browns' offensive line 
has been able to contain the three and four man rush. They forced the Steelers to go to the blitz and then they burned them for the touchdown pass against the blitz. Got to see what's going to happen here. Will they continue to try and get to him with a normal rush? Newsom has another 17 yards for the Browns. Two linebackers blitzing on the last play. Cleveland offensive line did a good job of picking them up. A little extra room for Ozzie Newsom. Ozzie Newsom did a good job of picking up the first down. Newsom, who has caught a pass now in 70 consecutive games. He was second to Todd Christensen last year. He had 89 grabs, three less than Christensen, who led the league. from number 56 Cole gets away from it and throws a perfect strike to Boyce Green. Green did a good job of hanging on to that football in traffic. Donnie Shell had fallen but still made the tackle. Perfect throw. First and goal will be the story from the three yard line and the Browns fans cheer their Cleveland heroes. We'll be back with the fourth and final quarter after these words from your local station after only three weeks play the Browns looking for their first win although they'd be but one and three if successful they would be just a game out of first place desperation has been the story 10 to 10 the Browns would like to put the points on the board here McDonald perhaps noting past history and the Browns failure to score from first and goal at the two had to settle for a field goal comes out passing on first down great third quarter for McDonald McDonald hammered hard in the first half of this game has really come back and earned some stripes here earned a great deal of confidence 199 yards eight for 11 I'd love to get another one right now and some points attached to it 46 of those yards check that 44 of them on a touchdown pass to Boyce Green well covered by Woodruff. Smart defensive play by the Steelers. They disguised their defense. McDonald thought he was going to see one thing and at the last second you saw them shifting. Let's watch what Newsom does on this play. Brennan coming inside and it's Newsom has got to be the hot receiver on that play. He's a little late turning around. Either that or McDonald's a little early firing the ball out. Ozzie never had a chance. Had his back of his helmet to the quarterback. Harris to the left. The rookie Brennan to the right. Third and goal. Harris. Touchdown. Daryl Harris. leading receiver in Miami Dolphin history. Duriel Harris has come here to Cleveland to make his mark. Some big plays last week in the first half against Denver, but none of them perhaps as big as that six-pointer right here in the third quarter. His first catch and his fourth today. <laughs> <and his> <laughs> We're in, aren't we, Nick? Excuse me. 
His first touchdown as a Cleveland Brown. And he caught 18 touchdown passes as a Dolphin. Second only to Nat Moore, an all-time Dolphin receiving, as you pointed out. And here it is, a diving catch for the lead. Perfectly thrown, it has to be, because the coverage by Washington is aggressive and right on the mark. But look how hard he squeezed that ball and how close it came to popping out. Yards on that drive, and Cleveland leads 17 to 10. We'll show you again the catch by Harris. You don't have to catch the ball with your hand around the point of it for it to be a touchdown, but he was uh, delicately inside the line, according to the official, as he caught it. Spins down to the rookie Spencer. First down, Pittsburgh at their 20. Let's go back to the touchdown reception by Duriel Harris. Harris taking that ball right over the top of the outstretched hands of Sam Washington. Watch him as he comes down and hits the ground. He's clutching the ball, and look how close it is to bouncing away from him. And Boy. that's the sideline right there that he skidded over, and a tough call. I think he could play that many times, and you wouldn't want to be the official making the judgment. We're playing that in slow motion. Remember that. It happens an awful lot quicker than that. Now the Steelers have not had good field position. Clay Matthews collars the tackler. Be home without it. Field, uh, one of the players obtained out of the USFL, played out in Phoenix for George Allen's team. They're happy to have him here. Aggressive. He'll come up and put his helmet on you. Can run. He's shown us some, he's shown us some toughness today, Dick. He saved a touchdown. Remember that diving stop against Thompson inside the five. on the outside and made a fine play. Brown's hoping that they could spring a little running play to get things back together. Sell out of some 80,000 fans at Cleveland Stadium. We said many of those have migrated here from Pittsburgh while they had their chance to cheer early. It's been the Browns who have outplayed Pittsburgh in the second half and are trying to add to a 17 to 10 lead. Pittsburgh linebackers with a tackle. Little's name has been called many times on tackles as you see the holding call pointed off toward the Browns. He is the leading tackler and relief of Lambert who's been out with that toe injury. He's had 23 tackles on the season and 
82 offense, still second down. Well, that's almost like that call we got on Duriel Harris earlier. That's Stallworth, 82 out there holding wide receivers. And that's a good, well, that's a that's a negative stat in a way. You hate to see mistakes. But when your wide receivers are working hard, that's Newsom, excuse me, wide receiver Newsom. Come on, Marlon, get on the right <laughs> side of the line of scrimmage but there. Two great ones wearing 82 yeah. here. Ozzie doing sure. a good job, obviously, of, of trying to get into the play. He wants to help. And in doing so, he cost him a 10-yard spot on the penalty. Look at that second half, 249 to 55, the yardage in favor of the Browns. Mike Pruitt, 25 to the 23 a flag is down and the Steelers may have been offside Keith Gary number 92 had anticipated the count and jumped off sides that's interesting do you take the yardage you're well down beyond what will give what you'll have on the on the penalty but maybe the down is more important than the yardage here let's see what Sam decides to do well while they decide we'll add this piece of drama this telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Cleveland Browns and the National Football League is prohibited. Well, indeed, their decision is to take the mark off on the penalty. And as I suggested, I believe because they don't want to give up the down. 92, defense, still second down. I'm going to run down the scores real quickly here. 21 to 19 the Jets over Buffalo these are all fourth quarter scores Washington 23 10 against New England Rams 17 Cincinnati 7 San Francisco 14 the Eagles 9 St. Louis 21 New Orleans 20 Atlanta 35 Houston 10 Minnesota 26 Detroit 21 those are all in the fourth quarter and with a bit more than 12 minutes left in Cleveland the Browns lead the Steelers 17 to 10. Boyce Green, Gary Dunn, whose granddaddy was the president of University of Miami for some 27 years. His dad and another brother also played along with Gary at Miami of Florida. Twenty-eight yard line. Pruitt bringing in a perhaps a suggestion from Rotigliano. Third down. About 17. McDonald fumbling the snap at the 31, and that creates a long field goal situation for Matt Barr. Barr, who had only hit one out of four coming into this game, got the short chip shot early. He's two for five. He'd love to sink a long one, if you will. Well, That's this is really a big one. McDonald has needed a big game, and so has Barr. So has Barr, yeah. And uh, Sam Artigliano said it. He said, Matt's a thoroughbred. He said, you don't take him out of the lineup. You don't even talk to him. He'll work hard. He works on his style. He's not kicking the ball badly. He just has not been connecting like he did last year. 48-yard try. And he has... who had scored only seven points in the second half all year have 20 in the second half today. And there's the long shot. If you're looking at Sam Rotigliano's shopping list, two of the things on that list, McDonald needs to have a good day and Barr needs to hit a long field goal. So far, he's two for two. Todd Spencer at the other end. return to the 33 yard line for the rookie from Southern California Dixon Hanford Dixon made the tackle 32 yard return when you're coming down on the special teams you've got to have determination you've got to keep coming after them Jim DeMont 53 coming down wide open gets away from Elton Veals gets around a second blocker on the ground didn't make the stop but he's down there putting a squeeze on. He's trying to give it his best anyway. First down, Steelers trailing 20 to 10 at their 33. 11 minutes left. Aaron Berg 
drops the ball. Keith Baldwin leveling Woodley on that play. Woodley slow getting up. Next week on NBC, our NFL coverage, early games after NFL 84 at 12.30 Eastern Time. Miami at St. Louis. Patriots and the Jets uh, fight it out. AFC East and Buffalo will be in Indianapolis against the Colts. The late game after Seattle, Minnesota and Cleveland, Kansas City, the Raiders and the Denver Broncos. and I'm sure coordinator Tom Moore is going to be discouraged with what's happening today, but Larry Brown, uh, right tackle, hurt early. They've had to keep rolling people in and out of that ball game. They've shifted around. This last play saw two rookies in there, Snell and Long, both in there. Right now, Tunchilkin is in at the right tackle, and Ray Snell is in at the left tackle. Snell was the number one draft pick of Tampa Bay in 1980. He came to the Steelers for Steve Corson. as he is sandwiched and still clutches the ball, but not enough for a first down as Matthews and Dixon hit him. The reason he has been so well received by his teammates is partially because of his toughness. He not only has athletic skills, he'll take the shot, hang on to the football. Ooh, that's Clay Matthews, 57, showing you why he's so tough. They're going to go for it, fourth down. Dick, this will be a dead ball foul, I think. I think the action taking place after the fact that Al Gross, I believe, the guy who banged the football off the helmet of one of the one of the Steelers officials sorting it out, but I don't think it will change possession on the football. Particularly out to get his troops off the field. And that's the kind of emotion that we had anticipated for this game. It's been held in check to this point, but the frustration on sensing that they had not made that first down erupted on the line of scrimmage. Personal foul, he says. Uh, he says it's going to go both against ways. both teams. Thank you, Sam. <laughs> well, there, Eddie, Eddie Johnson, Johnson celebrating. There's the shot right there that got the penalty on the other team. Gross throwing the football late. That's Greg, Greg Wolfley. Wolfley, 73, but I think there had already been a foul called against the Steelers at that point. Personal foul, 72. Yeah, I got Personal the wrong foul, side, I think. 27, there you Cleveland. Go. Yeah. Disqualification. Personal foul, 72, Pittsburgh. Disqualification. Penalties offset. Well, if it was 72, it's Ray Snell and not 73, Wolfley, and they, they've taken a little more bite in this penalty rather than just saying negating penalties. Well, not only that, but when you kick Snell out of the ball game with Brown already hurt, you further incapacitate uh, an offensive line that's occupying or been having to work with a lot of makeshift people in there. Well, while they sort out the battlers, it'll be Cleveland's ball when we return at the Pittsburgh 42. Gross will have to watch the rest of this game on the sideline and will not be able to help their teammates. Let's go back and take a quick peek at it on the field. The penalty had already been called on Snell, and right here, Gross delivers the football to the hem helmet of one of the Steelers. That's what got him thrown out of the game. Wolfley is after him, the handkerchief flying and <laughs> by the dozen out there, but neither coach happy with that situation. Well, from the tumult of Cleveland Stadium, Let's go to the sanctity of our studios in New York.
What a splendid introduction, Mr. Enberg. The magic number for the Cubs is down to two in the National League East. They beat the Cardinals in the first game of a doubleheader at Bush Stadium today. Eight to one, Steve Trout winning his 13th. But at Shea Stadium behind Dwight Gooden, the Mets are making it tough on the Cubs, leading Montreal 5-1 in the seventh. Dick. All right, Bob, and don't forget here on NBC, with the American League Western Division pennant race still a hotly contested at NBC Sports. They have not announced the games that they will be televising next Saturday, but you can be certain it'll be those that involve the uh, final games of the pennant fight and then the World Series where it belongs here with the Peacock in October. Dick, as you look at the two coaches, I'm sure that Chuck Noll is perhaps questioning having to throw those two players out of the game. He, he is obviously, I think, concerned about the fact that he's going to play short two tackles uh, through the last part of this game, but well, he's not happy at all. I, the other thing, I'm, I was very curious at that call, going for it with two yards on fourth down, uncharacteristic of Noel, who is the most conservative coach. And with nine and a half minutes remaining. Now Cleveland takes over on downs. Pruitt. And the Cleveland offense is very alive thank you here in this second half let's run down all the scores for you these are the early games today the Jets now lead Buffalo 28 19 all fourth quarter scores 26 10 oh it's a final the Redskins have beaten the Patriots Rams lead by three at Cincinnati 21 9 the unbeaten 49ers at Philadelphia 24 20 St. Louis leads at New Orleans Houston is apparently going to lose its fourth in a row 35 10 in Atlanta 23 21 Minnesota and the Lions in a dogfight at the Silverdome you're up to date here it's 20 to 10 Cleveland second and four Pruitt picking his way through a hole and I believe he has a first down at the Pittsburgh 31 Goodwin Goodman and Donnie Shell made the tackle Two young linemen working in there for the Browns. Bill Kant, 75, and Paul Farron, 74, in at tackles. And on the inside, some real veterans. One of them, 64, Joe Delamalur, made a fine, fine block on that last play. You know, they asked Joe in training camp, so what's the, big, the biggest difference between now and when you started? He said, well, one thing, he says, you see the big cars in the parking lot now? He said they used to belong to the veterans. Now they belong to the rookies. <laughs> They're getting the big bonuses. First down, Pruitt up the middle, and suddenly the Browns are chewing up big chunks on the ground with the bull-like rushes of Pruitt. Donnie Shell and Cole with a tackle, but not until Pruitt had added six more to his individual total. Green outside, Pruitt inside. McDonald throwing the ball well. Things are beginning to work for Joe Scanella and the offense of this Cleveland Brown team. The Browns, who had not rushed well at all this year, over the 100-yard mark. That's particularly impressive since Steelers are third in rushing in the NFL. Not much there this time as Robin Cole wraps his arms around the ball carrier Pruitt with 7.08 left in the fourth quarter. Well, I mentioned two of the things that are on Sam Martigliano's shopping list. The long kick by Barr to restore his confidence. A good game for McDonald. Final thing on that list, and certainly the most important, he wants a victory today. We said desperate. Well, things are not quite so desperate now. You're up 10 points. You've got the football. Now you just start thinking about controlling the ball, eating the clock, and perhaps getting some more points on the board here. that Washington would be tested. He's the new guy on the block. They're going to go after him. Newsom had gotten clean. The officials ruled that to be incidental contact. No question that it stripped Ozzie's legs out from underneath him. That's one you want to look at in the films. Ozzie Newsom has had another big day for the Browns. Five catches, 99 yards, and one a splendid diving catch that set up the first score of field goal. Oh. It's low, but it is no good. Off 
to the left. As Barr lost his footing on that 42-yard attempt. And so the score remains a 10-point difference. And the Steelers will get the ball with 634 left. Watch Barr's plant foot as it slips right out from underneath him as he begins to swing clear. The plant foot just slides out and pops free. No chance for that football. It's amazing, though. He had the distance, even though it was a line drive, but hooked it to the left. So the Browns, who had really struggled to get anything in the second half, scoring seven in three games in the second half, have 20 this afternoon, 10 in each quarter. Woodley to the wide open stalwart. And I think we're going to get a roughing the penalty on Ch Chip Banks really hit Woodley after the throw. So they're going to tack on another 15 from the 46 yard line. Now that's a stupid mistake. Banks knew he kept his back to the official. He knew he would hit Woodley late. You'll see it right here. He came in. Woodley had thrown the pass. Banks had time to change his course. Now watch this. The ball is gone. Banks can slow up. He can move off. He doesn't have to hit Woodley. Look at him. He keeps his back to the official. I think hoping that the call would not be made. That referee Dick Jorgensen on the spot to toss the two touchdown passes in each of the first three games. Scoop Gillespie, another rookie, is in the backfield for Pittsburgh. That's Gillespie with the ball. He's got some speed and gets it to the 30-yard line. A 12th-round draft pick from William Jewell, who is built like an Adonis. Got some great names on this team. Scoop Gillespie, Louis Lips, Wedgie Thompson. Almost like a jazz group. That's the Brown lowest scoring total in the league prior to today. And, and update that, that. That looks a lot better, doesn't it? I'm sure the Retigliano is trying to climb that mountain. Nine yards, second and one. That's pleasant music here at Cleveland. Gillespie again, and he has a first down at the 27 yard line. Clock running, 538 left. We go to New York. Dick, they've got a good one going in Buffalo. Pat Ryan has thrown three touchdown passes to Wesley Walker for the Jets, but Joe Ferguson strikes back for Buffalo. 32 yards to Julius Dawkins. 28-26 New York. About three minutes to go, fourth quarter. Well, that Pete Axel made some unusual picks on NFL 84. He picked Buffalo. He picked the Browns. So far, he's doing all right. Woodley saying, somebody help me. And it's broken up by Clinton Burrell, number 49, and a flag down. A very late flag went down on the far side of the field. Did Woodley cross the line of scrimmage, I wonder? Woodley doing a great job of avoiding the sack there. Looked like there was no way he could get away from Banks, who'd come in hard from the outside. Well, they're examining the play. I, you may be right, Dick. I don't know what these are called, but the flag did come down late. Yes, absolutely right. Meanwhile, the Los Angeles Rams have won at Cincinnati 24-14, so the Bengals are 0-4, the Rams 2-2. Mike Gooman finished the scoring for the Rams with a 43-yard kickoff pass, return. Number 19, offense, loss of down, second down. That hurts. That hurts. Woodley, I think, willing to sacrifice the pass, zipped it in, hoping he'd get it there. Burrell did a good job of breaking it up, but it didn't matter anyway as he was over the line. New Orleans leading the Cardinals by a field goal in the fourth quarter. Minnesota now an eight-point lead at Detroit. Audible. They got the blitz coming. and the rookie is to the 19-yard line short of a first down but a terrific effort by both passer and receiver did a good job of what we call window dressing the defense making it look like an all-out blitz you see people moving around on the line of scrimmage actually only one linebacker coming 
Woodley rolls out all of Frank all of Tarkington on that play a reverse roll and Scoop Gillespie gets up and gets the football breaks away from Cousineau to get a little extra yardage they've got a third and short very big down for these Steelers third and between two and three yards for the first down clock running 4 10 left Gillespie a flag is down and Gillespie dropped for a loss Eddie Johnson spearheading that charge number 51 holding against the Steelers now that's still a choice you're going to have to make the Steelers well inside field goal range you march them back 10 Ritigliano said take the penalty yeah there's Sam he said let's let's get him back now it's critical number 52 offense still third down all right Sam says we want to shut them out on this drive if we can they need a field goal and a touchdown to tie two field goal or two touchdowns to go ahead this becomes a very very big play for the Steelers offensively penalty against Webster you hate to talk about Webster only on a penalty Atlanta obviously going to beat Houston he's been an all pro 11th year never missed a game for the Steelers you, sometimes you overlook the fact here's one of the really great players he almost went to since uh, went to uh, Green Bay as a coach for Boris Gregg but elected to stay with Pittsburgh third and 12. Complete to Thompson. Woodley under pressure. Now the long field goal try. Number 57, Clay Matthews from that outside linebacking position, bursting in there. Woodley did a good job of saving the sack. And again, that's the most important thing you could do there. At least now a chance at a field goal. It'll be a long one for Anderson, around 47 yards. Anderson kicked one 46 yards in the third quarter and Woodley's numbers quite in contrast. We started this telecast telling you the great numbers for Woodley and miserable figures for McDonald. They have reversed today. Penalty flag down. Anderson's kick is good. Now we'll see if it counts. Someone moving in there. Yes. Larry Brown, I believe. Oh, my. Illegal formation offense. moving but maybe lined up again too far back and we said the officials have been really tough on the alignment of the defense or the offensive tackles let's look and see you see how far back the right tackle 79 is his helmet must fall within the zone created by the numbers of the center they felt he was too far back well, this is interesting. Anderson's kick would have been good from five yards farther back, but rather than risk another chance, which would be over 50 yards and certainly test Anderson's limits, now the Steelers, who must score on this possession, trailing 20 to 10, will go for it. Fourth down and 17. That's an interesting call by Chuck Dole, isn't it? Because Anderson had plenty of distance on that last field goal try. Looks as if Noel knows something we don't. Throwing long, and there's no one there. And the Browns take over on downs, and Cleveland apparently will celebrate its first win of the year. 3.45 on the clock. Particularly himself out on the field. I think he's starting to feel a little a little surge of adrenaline here. A little bright sunshine in that dark tunnel that Cleveland's been walking through for the last three weeks. Down for the Steelers came on defense. Washington's interception. Mike Pruitt freshening up his individual statistics as he rumbles for seven more. A final score, Atlanta bombs Houston 42 to 10. So Cincinnati and Houston remain winless. Atlanta's now two and two. World Series, October 9th. Who will it be? Some are saying maybe a renewal of the 45 series, the Cubs and the Tigers. Someone said, well, how about the San Diego Padres, who have had such a great season under Dick Williams. And who knows, it might be Minnesota, Kansas City, or even the Angels who are involved. Pruitt, no gain this time. It'll be third and two. Gary Dunn and Dwayne.
Brian Woodruff on the tackle. I think the uh, camera coverage has been about as outstanding as any telecast we've had. Merlin, I want to thank all the men and women involved today. Dee, we've just been inside every play. We've also had some good sounds to share with them as we've listened to some of the hits as well as seen them. Bill Perinella, what a job he's done. Larry Cirillo, our producer. Ted Nathanson calling the shots, our director. 2.30 left. First down here for the Browns, and it's all over. And Pruitt has the first down at the 45. I think we started out by saying in a blood match like this, a rivalry as intense as this one, throw out the standings, throw out the statistics. These two teams have changed roles. Desperation is a wonderful incentive. As Chuck Noel and the Steelers have learned, watching the Browns, they lead by 10 at the two-minute mark. And now, here comes another fantastic finish. Alcoa presents fantastic finishes. 1980, in overtime, Detroit's Eddie Murray kicks off to Dave Williams of the Bears. Williams grabs it and starts up the middle. He breaks through the wall and cuts left at the 30. Heading for the sidelines, Williams sails past the 40 and turns on the speed that carries him untouched into the end zone for the fastest overtime win in NFL history. Check the win of this 84 season. And at the start of this telecast, we said the pressure on the shoulders of that man, Reticliano. Some were asking for his scalp here in Cleveland. And he knew that an 04 start would all but end early this season. But a win would get him right back in the race, only one game behind. Pruitt to the 50, and apparently it'll be academic from here. The Steelers do call a time at the 153 mark and have two more remaining. But when they did not score, when the penalty nullified the Anderson field goal that would have made it 20 to 13, uh, therein finished the hopes of the Steelers today. Paul McDonald has had he seems so soft-spoken, intelligent, kind of a fool you, but he can stand in there and take the punishment, and he's taken it both uh, emotionally and physically. We'll get his reaction uh, after the game if we have time. way to the 45-yard line before David Little can stop him. Dick, and Dick, there's another streak that will be continued today. The Steelers, for some reason, have not played well on natural turf, on the natural grass of a field like this. They'll be two out of the last ten on natural turf. Now, that's interesting. Certainly, a number of those games came here, and also a couple of games out in the Los Angeles against the Raiders, but that's, a, that's something that to be considered when we look at them in the future time running out and Pruitt has carried the ball the last five times for Cleveland third and a yard Pruitt again Ooh. and he slugs his way to the 43 a first down and the clock is at the one minute mark our thanks to Joe Costanza and company but first uh, he has worked out these uh, numbers we started with Pittsburgh ahead by two full games but Cleveland now at one and three is back in at only one behind the Steelers Cincinnati and Houston 0 and 4 our thanks also to John Vetchkul and Pete Alvin Don Drevis and Gary Chulik for their superb help today they'll meet again on December 9th in Pittsburgh these two arch rivals carrying for the seventh consecutive time and the clock running and apparently that will be the final play of the game and the Cleveland Browns fans celebrate. A day that began in desperation will end in triumph for the Cleveland Browns and Sam Ritigliano you said it very well, Dick. There's another game to be played in Pittsburgh, and there's a lot of season left between now and the playoffs. And you look who Reticliano sought out as quarterback, Paul McDonald. McDonald, he stayed with him. Fans wanted a change. Brian Seif was the quarterback here. He left. McDonald got the job. Disappointing 0-3 start, but he played very well.